Hi there, folk. You've just had an ad break. How long was that ad break? Okay. From the time it began to the time it ended. So from the last time you saw me to now that you're seeing me, what period of time has that actually been? And in this segment, we're going to be looking at something called calculating elapsed time. Let's have a look at this word, elapsed time. That's kind of complicated. What does it mean? Well, elapsed time or duration is the measurement of time passing. So that whole complicated word, elapsed time, actually in simple terms means the amount of time that's just gone past or the duration of time. And in this segment, we are going to be looking at some very basic and very simple time calculations. We might as well make them a little more complicated as the session continues. Before we even do that though, I just want to recap, and we have done this in a session before, but I just want to recap. So in time, we could write time as the following. If I give you this time, 8 dot dot zero zero, what does that actually mean? Well, it can mean three things. It could mean... 8 a.m. It could mean 8 p.m. And I could write it as it's shown, 8 dot dot zero zero. Now, 8 a.m. means 8 o'clock in the morning. 8 p.m. means 8 o'clock at night. And 8 dot dot zero zero actually is something which we term a 24-hour clock. Okay, in other words, for uh, morning time, if I write with 8 a.m., I start from uh, 00 a.m. all the way or, yeah, all the way through to 12 p.m. and 12 p.m. all the way through to 12 a.m. So I'm using 12 hour segments and those segments are defined by a.m. and p.m. But if I use a 24-hour clock, because we know 12 hours plus 12 hours is 24, if I use a 24-hour clock, what I'm actually saying is I'm starting from the day, the, uh, the time the day starts, which is 000, all the way through to midnight the next night, which is 24 hours. So I can have time of 1343, 21, uh, um, 58, okay? 24 hour time and I'll show you in the segment now how we're going to use that. So let's have a look at our first example. School starts at 7.45. You are in class for 2 hours and 30 minutes. What time will the bell ring for first break? Give your answer in the 24 hour format. Okay, so this is telling me I'm dealing in 24 hour um, format. Why? Because it hasn't told us a.m. or p.m. So if I go 0, 7, dot, dot, 45, and I now add 2 hours and 30 minutes, so we're going to add 2 hours and 30 minutes. When I add that, 45 plus 30 gives me 75. Now, folk, I can't have 75 minutes, all right? Because 75 minutes actually comprises of an hour of 60 minutes and a further 15 minutes. So I'm going to change this to 15 and that hour I'm going to put in the hour section of my calculation. So I don't have 7 plus 2 but I now have 7 plus 2 plus 1. And 7 plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10, 15. That's it in my 24-hour format. If it was in my 12-hour format, I would probably say 10, 15 a.m. Okay. I'm going to do this now with the use of a calculator. And again, in one of our sessions, we did much earlier in the series, we looked at time, but let's just recap on how we can use time in our calculator. If I look at this little button over here, it looks like a circle, then a comma, 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 it looks kind of weird. I call that my time button, okay? So, 
if I look at 7.45, I'm going to say to my calculator, I got seven hours. Take note, I've got to push my time button and this funny little square appears on my calculator because it's telling my calculator, right, that's the hours. I've dealt with the hours. The next number I push in is going to be the minutes. So I push 45 and push my time button. So I'm telling my calculator that's the end of the minutes. But guys, we know time has hours, it has minutes, and it has seconds. In this 745, I don't have seconds. So I'm going to tell the calculator I don't have seconds. Please take note, after putting in hours, I've got to push the time button. Putting in the minutes, got to push the time button. Putting in the seconds, got to push the time button. Now to that, I'm going to add 2 hours 30 minutes. 2 hours, I push the time button, say to the calculator, that's the only hours I have. I have 30 minutes, time button, I have no more minutes. And seconds, I got zero seconds. I now push equals and look what happens. My calculator gives me 10 hours, 15 minutes and no seconds. I don't have to worry about the seconds. So my time that I have break is going to be 10, 15. And that's if I've written it in the 24 hour time. My next question says this. Palesa starts cooking dinner at 6 p.m. She has to leave for a choir practice in 1 hour 45 minutes. What time must she leave? Give your answer in the 12 hour format. Well, we know 6 o'clock plus 1 hour is going to be 7 o'clock and 45 minutes, 7.45 p.m. And notice I've got to put p.m. because I'm doing it in my 12-hour format. If I don't do it in my 12-hour format, then I would have to change that to 24-hour format. And that's exactly what my next question says. Convert your answer to the 24-hour format. Now, people, 7.45 means it's 7 hours 45 minutes after midday. But before midday, I had 12 hours in my day. From midnight all the way through to midday was 12 hours. So I've got to add those 12 hours for my 24-hour format. Because it's not just 7 hours, 45 minutes in the day. 12 hours of this have been there. So add that up and I get a time of 19.45. So in the 24-hour format... 7.45 is the same as 19.45. You understand that? Next one. The bus leaves school at 14.30. It takes 70 minutes to get Mulalu's house. Okay. What time will he arrive at home? Give your answer in the 24-hour format. Now, the nice thing is we already have this in the 24-hour format. And I've got a time of 14 minutes, 30 seconds. It takes 70 minutes, so I'm going to add 70 minutes. When I add this, I get 100 minutes and 14 hours. So it's 14 hours, 100 minutes. Now we cannot have 100 minutes. Why? Because 60 minutes make an hour. So if I take 100 minutes and I subtract 60, I'm left with 40. So I'm going to say that is 40, but I've got an extra hour that I've got to add to the 14. So the time is going to be 1540. Should we do that on our calculator? Let's do that on our calculator and see what we actually get here. So I've got a time of 14 hours, 30 minutes, and I've got no seconds. No, notice I'm telling the calculator there, got to keep pushing that time button. To that, I'm going to add no hours, 70 minutes, and no seconds. And my answer then is 1540, exactly what I got over here. All right. Now, it says convert your answer to the 12-hour format. So, 1540, if I subtract 12 hours, I'm going to land up with 340. 
and it's 3.40 p.m. Why? Because the 12 hours tells me I've dealt with the morning. We're now in the afternoon, 3.40 p.m. Simple, isn't it? Okay. Let's have a look at another example here. Anati's father goes to work at 8 a.m. He fetches her from school 7 hours and 30 minutes later. What time will he fetch her? Give your answer in the 24-hour format. So, 8 a.m. We're going to write that in a 24-hour format of 800 hours. He fetches her 7 hours and 30 minutes later. So, when we add that, I've got 30 minutes. I've got 15 hours, 30 minutes. Okay, that's in my 24-hour format. My next question. Lauren finishes her music class at 15.30. It takes her 30 minutes to get to home. She then does homework for 50 minutes. Lauren meets her friend 20 minutes after she's finished her homework. What time do they meet? Give your answer in the 12-hour format. So because it's asking for 12-hour format, we've got to remember that we're going to have to convert my 24-hour format back into 12 hours. So let's have a look at this. 15.30. She finishes her music. It takes her 30 minutes to get home. So we're going to add 30 minutes to that. So that already takes us to... 1600 hours. She does her homework for 50 minutes. So she's got 1600. We're going to add 50 minutes. And now it's 16 hours, 50 minutes. Lauren meets her friend 20 minutes after she finishes her homework. So if we add 1650 and we're going to add 20 minutes to that, I land up here with 70 minutes. The problem is I can't have 70 minutes because 60 minutes in an hour. We subtract, seven, we say 70 minus 60 leaves us with 10. So we've got 10 minutes there. I've got an extra hour which I'm putting in here, so 17. So she meets her friend at 17.10. But that's in my 24-hour timing. I've got to put it in 12 hours. So I'm subtracting 12 hours. And I'm left with 5, 10. But because I'm dealing in a 12-hour clock, I've got to say, Oi, is this AM or is this PM? And obviously it's PM. Why? Because I already had 12 hours in the day. Heather starts baking biscuits at 6.15 PM. The biscuits must come out of the oven at 6.35 p.m. and needs to cool for another 20 minutes before they can be eaten. How long will the biscuits be in the oven? Okay, so she starts baking them at 6.15 and they come out at 6.35. So we've got 6.35, we're minusing 6.15, 35 minus 15 is going to give me 20. 6 minus 6 is nothing. So it's for 20 minutes in the oven. The next question, what time will they be ready to eat? Give your answer in the 12-hour format. Well, the um, biscuits came out the oven at 6.35, and we now need to cool them for 20 minutes. So I'm going to say, right, We've got 6.35 p.m. is when the biscuits come out the oven. We're going to add 20 minutes. That gives us 6.55 p.m. is when we can eat them. And if you anything like me and my son, when my wife bakes, oh, as they come out the oven, they smell so good, you just want to eat them straight away. And they always say, no, let them cool down first. And then you say, well, how long must they cool there? 20 minutes. And you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait. And as that 20 minute comes, rawr, into the biscuits. Okay, nothing better than homemade biscuits. Alison's favorite TV show starts at 20.35. It's a 45 minute show. So if it starts at 20.35, we've got to add 45 minutes. When I do that, I'm going to land up here with 80 minutes, 
and 20 hours, 20, 80. Problem with that though is we've only got 60 minutes in an hour. So I subtract 60 and I'm left with 20. However, I've picked up an extra hour, which we're going to add here. So the show finishes at 21.20. Question goes on and says, if she watches the movie that follows her favorite show and finishes at 10.50 p.m., how long was the movie in hours and in minutes? Okay, so she starts, the show ends at 10.50. She started watching it at 21.20. Okay, how long is that going to be? Well, 50 minus 20 is going to give me 30. Okay, and 10 p.m. Aha, let's have a look here. Folk, this is in my 24-hour time. This is in my 12 hour. I cannot work 12 hours and 24 hour time. Not possible. So I'm going to have to change this. And I'm changing this. We, if we add 12 hours, I'm going to get 2250. We're going to subtract 2120. Now it makes more sense. 50 minus 20 is 30. And 22 minus 21 is 1. My show is 1 hour 30 minutes long. Okay. Right. So, Vinayak is meeting his brother for lunch at 13.15. He also wants to go to the shops before lunch. It will take him 20 minutes to get from the shops to the restaurant where he's meeting his brother. If he leaves home at 10.10, how much time does he have to do his shopping? Give your answer in hours and give your answer in minutes. So it's hours and minutes. So let's have a look at this. Firstly, he meets his brother, he's going to meet his brother at 13.15, right? He needs 20 minutes to get to the shop. So let's take those 20 minutes away. Now we have a problem because we can't say 15 minus 20. But what we can do is we can carry an hour. And we can say let's change that to 12 hours and add 60 minutes. 60 plus 15, 75 minutes. Okay, why? Because we couldn't subtract 20, so we're going to take an hour here. Hour, give us 60 minutes. We had 15 plus 60. We've now got 75 minutes. We're subtracting 20 minutes. So now it's 12. 75 minus 20 is 55. So he's got to leave the shop by 12.55 to get to lunch by quarter past one. Okay. If he leaves home at 10.10, 10, how much time does he have to do his shopping? All right. So let's subtract 10.10. 10, and we're going to presume he lives very close to the shop. 10.10. 10, 55 minus 10 is 45. 12 minus 10 is 2. He has 2 hours and 45 minutes, presuming he lives right next to the shop, to do his shopping. Right, folk. It's time up. Time for another ad break. Before we go to the ad break, let's just summarize what we've done. In the segment, we covered the following. We explained what elapsed time is. And we said elapsed time is the time that's passed. Okay? And we've done examples on elapsed time as well. We'll chat to you after the ad break. See you soon.